All right, so today we're going to be starting off with EER diagram, which is enhanced ER diagram. It's just like the ER diagram that we drew, it's a more advanced version, a version that's more uh, easy to understand, like categorization, subclasses, superclasses, then generalization and specialization, disjoint. Well, we'll come to that later, but the main, the first thing that we should learn is subclasses and superclasses. As the name suggests, subclasses and superclasses means that there is a parent and then it extends to some child uh, entities. So it's like when you have a parent entity, it can extend towards a child entity with this union sort of sign. And then this is the child entity. For example, um, an employee. An employee is like a generalized form. Like an employee can be a designer or a developer or a manager, like another one if you write, then a manager. Like it's like categorizing or no, no like not, not categorizing, it's like uh, like specialization. Like you have like you have special like employee is just the general idea and designer, developer, manager, these belong to the employee superclass. So this is the subclass, these designer, developer, manager, and yada, yada, this other stuff that comes out of employee. These are all subclasses and this is the superclass. So this is the generalized form and this is the specialized form. So that's what specialization and generalization is typically. Let's look at this example ER diagram, EER diagram. Like as you can see, uh, the employee is extended to a secretary, a technician, and an engineer. And each of these, each of these entities have their own uh, attributes. So what it, what happens is these entities also inherits the attributes of the employee entity. So a super, a subclass inherits the attributes of a superclass. All right, and these are like the common attributes, F name, L name, minute, the name, SSN. I mean, this is a composite attribute, okay. And SSN and birth date address. So these are like the common features of an employee. So secretary, a technician also have these attributes as well as a secretary has the special attribute called typing speed. A technician has the special attribute called T grade and engineer has this engineering type. All right, so. Uh, a subclass and superclass. This is this is just about it about subclass and superclass. And as you can see, there's this um, there's this what you called um, a union sign. It's like a subset sort of sign. Like when you write set notations, that time you write this belongs to this, like a subset, right? It's like A belongs to B means A is a subset of B. So that's how you uh, like that's how you denote it in an EER diagram. And next we go towards generalization and specialization uh, generalization is basically just generalizing the entities the common and the common entities into a normal a generalized entity which is employee so when you have like individual entity like scattered all around you can generalize all of them to a special a special entity like to one entity which is a generalized entity so a has these child a b c all right so you special uh, you like you generalize all these common like if each of these three subclasses have common properties which you think that they should be generalized into then you generalize it into a, a, a common sub a super class in the similar way, a specialization is when you have one common class like a person, one common entity like person. So suppose a person in a university. A person in a university could be a teacher, a student, and then a guardian, and then a caretaker or janitor, as you might say, janitor. So yeah, a, a university or a school would contain these kind of these categories of people, teacher, student, guardian, and janitor, and these are like the specialized form. All right, so next we go towards disjoint and overlapping. What does that mean? Like in the diagram, you might have noticed, what's with this D thing going on here? Well, 
a disjoint class, I mean, sorry, a disjoint uh, su superclasses, uh, sorry, disjoint subclasses, what it means is that uh, disjoint classes of specializations must be disjoint. Means an entity, these entity can be a member of at most one subclass, as in a secretary cannot be a technician or an engineer. A secretary is a secretary. Similarly, a technician cannot be an engineer and or a secretary. It has to be a, a te technician only. That means an employee will have only one position and one position only, and they can't be like uh, two things at the same time. Two, they can't have two positions at the same time. So that means that the, the constraint that, that falls upon them is a disjoint constraint. And if there was O, instead of D, if, here, if there was O here, then it would be overlapping constraint. That means that a secretary can be a technician at the same time or a technician can be an engineer or all three of them could have the three positions, they could hold the three positions at the same time. That's what overlapping means. It means like the formal definition would be uh, that a subclass can be a member of more than one super, uh, uh, more than one subclasses. An entity can be a member of more than one sub, uh, subclasses, all right? But in disjoint, an entity can be a member of only one subclass, at most one subclass, all right? And then we come towards partial or total. Now, as you can see, there's a single line again coming here, and then there's a double line here, which means that an, uh, like the participation has to be total, it can be total or it can be partial. Single line denotes it's partial, and a double line denotes it's total which means that an employee, like for example, if you look at here, an employee could be a salaried employee or an hourly employee, but it has to be these two types of employee, right? It can't be like, like an employee has to be just any of these two types. But in this case, an employee, like what, what subclasses we have is secretary, technician, and engineer. It means that uh, like employees does not have to be just secretary, technician, and engineer. There can be more kinds of employees. Suppose there was a janitor or there was a caretaker, or there was a guard, security guard. We didn't mention these here, which means that there can be more than one kind of employees than these three mentioned over here, all right? That's why, like, for example, if you see another line protruding from here, and that's a single line, it denotes that an employee can be a manager, or it can, like, uh, an employee could be a manager, it could not. It doesn't have to be a manager. All employees don't have to be a manager, but... Uh, an employee has to be any of these two types for sure, salaried employee or an hourly employee. All right, so next we move on towards hierarchy and lattice structure. What's a hierarchy and lattice structure? A hierarchy is basically uh, uh, what you call a, a tree, no, sorry, a subclass which has uh, which inherits the attributes not only of its direct superclass, but also of its predecessor superclasses. It's like for sort of like a tree structure. For example, if you like draw it over here, suppose there are uh, many entities, and then after that, this can also have many entities, like a tree sort of structure. But a lattice structure is like a subclass with more than one superclasses. For example, the for entity A, the superclass is entity B. But for entity A, the superclass can also be entity C. So entity A has two two superclasses. All right. So that means that it forms. Anyway, so we that's what a lattice and hierarchical uh, structure means. Hier hierarchical su subclasses mean like hi lattice hierarchy is forms a tree structure. And lattice forms a sort of like continuing structure which has more than an entity where where, it, where an entity who has more than one uh, superclass. It has multiple inheritance. All right. So specialization is mostly a top-down approach because we are like uh, when we find when we find when we have this one uh, entity, we specialize it and form like common uh, find some small. Uh, individual subclasses and generalization is a bottom up approach. Like we start from the common sub, uh, subclasses and then we generalize them into a one so superclass. So that's like a bottom up approach. So yeah, that's about it for enhanced ER diagram. I hope you understood 
what how an enhanced diagram looks like and what it, uh, what it's used for it actually basically makes the whole ear diagram more clean and easy to understand and when you have too many informations that time it's better to use an enhanced ear diagram like you may have tables with secretary technician and engineer which would have specialized attributes so that time you can't just like you need to you need to like specialize these employees and have their separate attributes written with each entities that time we use an eer diagram so yeah that's about it for today's tutorial i hope you understood eer diagram and next we'll move on to the schema diagrams thank you for watching